The information contained in this video is not financial advice, and a failure to correctly utilize the processes outlined and networks used can result in the permanent loss of your crypto. Don't be an idiot. Follow the steps as given. Are your funds stuck on Avalanche? Or Polygon? Or XDAI? Or Binance Smart Chain? Or Optimism? Or Arbitrum? Or any of the massive amount of side chains that are available now? Do you need to get them somewhere else? A lot cheaper there's a better way all right so to start with the obvious one we're going to talk about routing cross chain so you're going to have to open up metamask um if you're using wallet connect you can use that not a big fan of it but you know fill your boots. Uh, I'm going to join up. I'm already set to the AVAX network. You can see I have a little bit of tokens in here. Um, you can use any network, uh, major network. There is a huge amount of network support, uh, except for Harmony, unfortunately, uh, isn't quite supported yet. I'm going to go to xpollinate.io, and you can see they have a beautiful new interface. Uh, it is so clean. Go up to the top right, click connect, and select the type of wallet you're going to be using. Of course, I'm going to be using MetaMask because it is the most functional and it's automatically going to have me set to the AVAX network. You can see I'm connected through MetaMask to the site and it automatically recognizes that I will be transferring from Avalanche. So I'm going to select one of the usable tokens. Um, you can see that they're mostly stable coins, Ethereum and wrapped uh, Bitcoin, but they also added the graph. I have some USDC in my wallet, so I'm just going to use that. Now I have to select where I want to send it to. Um, maybe I'll send it to, I don't know, Polygon, because, you know, literally everything I do goes through Polygon. So, enter an amount, about 25 bucks should be just fine. It's going to spend a moment calculating, finding a router. Um, there are a large handful, ever-growing list of routers available, and it's going to charge me about 0 0.0125, so that's about 1.25 cents. Uh, as the routing fee. However, it says destination transaction cost is about 41 cents. That's because that's the cost in AVAX fees that's being estimated because AVAX unfortunately is not that cheap of a network. So I should receive about 24 and a half bucks on the other side. Uh, again, I'll note that only 1.25 cents of that is actually in uh, fees from XPollinate. The rest is all AVAX. Uh, there's a bunch of advanced options. We'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, but as you can see here, there's quite a few things you can do. So like any other DEX or tool, I'm going to have to approve the actual uh, token first to be used by XPollinate. So I have to click approve USDC uh, and then I have to do an approval. This is a one time thing for this unless you delete that approval using something like Unrect or DBank. And once it's approved, I can swap the token. Uh, click swap USDC. It's gonna confirm everything I've already looked at and then click confirm. And this is where I will spend the AVAX. You can see the expenditure is about um, 0 0.00335 AVAX, which is about 40 cents as it had estimated. And it's going to take a few moments to contact the router and get everything set up for me. All right, so it's prepared it. It's on its way to the router. Uh, you can see which router it's using. It's not using one of the primary routers. It's using a secondary router, which is just fine. Some of the secondaries are super fast and it's already a pending transaction. Uh, the new system, when you're moving off certain changes, is extremely quick, I'm finding. So that's really good. Oh, and it looks like we're already ready to go. Uh, so go ahead and click sign to claim funds. You'll notice there's a lot less clicking in the new UI than the old one. It does almost everything automated. You just have to sign to claim it on the other side. So there will be a slight signature message. You can just go ahead and click sign and it will push it through to your wallet. Claim is successful. If I click back over into my MetaMask wallet and take a look at Polygon, uh, you will see that the USDC has arrived on the other side. Now, this is a feature I've uh, featured heavily in my other videos. Um, so we can move 
these tokens not only between different chains, but we can actually use these chains to move them into other wallet types, um, either in exchanges or elsewhere. Uh, so this trick I use a lot. I'm going to move from Polygon to Binance Smart Chain. So I'll just enter an amount, but I can also enter an external receiving address. You see when I drop down the advanced options, it's at the top there. So I'm going to go to MEXC, which is, you know, a very handy dandy non-KYC exchange. And I'm going to deposit my funds from my MetaMask Polygon wallet into MEXC. So I'm going to go select Ethereum and I'm going to use the BEP20 or the BSC uh, smart chain. Note that they do warn that it is a slow chain and BSC is probably the slowest of all side chains. So please keep that in mind. I will copy my deposit address and I'll put that in the receiving address. Remember, this goes in the receiving address, not the contract address. Uh, there are a lot of other fields here and let's talk about those for a quick moment. Now, contract address and call data are mainly used for backend testing, but they can also be used to do weird things like calling contracts in another chain using the relayer. Um, say you have funds on Polygon, you could call a Uniswap contract uh, through XPollinate to make a swap on Uniswap on Arbitrum um, using those two fields. I'm not going to demonstrate that here because that is way too advanced for me, but it is a possibility. Uh, the Preferred routing address would just be used if you want to select one of the specific routers, and I'll show you how to find those later. So let's just get this transaction started. Uh, it's gonna search just like usual to try to find a router. Uh, for Ethereum to BSC, BSC being a bit funky, might not always find first try, so just keep trying. Found me one this time, so go ahead and swap ETH. Fees are looking to be 0 0.000005 Ethereum, which is barely anything. Um, super tiny plus our one and a half cent max polygon fee. Yeah, you can see 0.00394 Matic, basically nothing. Go ahead and approve that. And of course it will then start rolling forward. Uh, it's already prepared. It's connect. So it's connect to a different router than we did on our previous example. You can see right here, you can always copy that router address too, if you like the router or you get good speed out of it. And I've kind of, through the magic of editing, skipped the lengthy time you have to wait on Binance Smart Chain. Go ahead, claim those funds, click sign, and it should push through. It should be noted, you'll notice there's that little thing at the top right. If you ever reload the page here because you didn't claim the funds immediately, you can always use that to claim the funds too if you come back to the site. Claim has been successful, so let's go ahead and make sure that that has actually arrived. We can click back over into MEXC and you can see that I have about 40 bucks of Ethereum. Uh, the exact amount arrived through here and it's nice and intact and I can use it for whatever I want. Finally, it's worth noting that Xpollinate has its own explorer. This is run by Connex, the parent group uh, for Xpollinate. Uh, it's the Connex Explorer. You can see the available liquidity by chain. Uh, you can see the total volume, uh, available liquidity, how many transactions. Obviously, Matic is the most popular network. I'm not going to say that's because of me, but you know, it, it, it might be. Um, you can see which coins have the most liquidity, uh, USDC and Ethereum right up there. And you can even do uh, transactional exploration. Um, the dashboard, of course, shows latest transactions, but uh, there's the option at the top to see those individually. You can also look at the various routers they have available. You can see that they have 24 different routers available on nine chains covering 47 different contracts. And you can see how much liquidity each one has. Uh, you can look at the leaderboard amongst the routers, which ones are handling the most. Of course, the official Connext router does not count against this leaderboard. Um, there's a standard, again, Transactions Explorer. You can click on the top right and search for your transactions by your wallet address. And of course, you can check the status of the various networks and their level of sync. Uh, sometimes things like BSC or XDAI or sometimes Optimism will fall out of sync and it'll be noted here as to why.